recognise that piece. It's Innocence by Bergmuller and it's one of the wonderful pieces from his Opus 100. Um, and it's one of my favourite teaching pieces and has been for a long time. And it's interesting that this week I've had a few questions about it from various people. So I just thought, OK, I'm going to hop on to my teaching tips this week and just talk about some of the common problems, three common problems that you find in this piece and just some ideas on how to fix them. Of course, the ideas can go on and on and you'll all have your own particular thoughts, but I just thought I'd, I'd give you my thoughts on it. So the three problems I'm going to look at in particular are the left-hand triads and how to make those really um, firm and together. And then the right hand in the, the downward movement at the very start there. And then the third thing is the coordination that's required halfway through the piece. So the left-hand triads, we've got these of course. In getting those spot on together, so that they sympathetically accompany the, the, the beautiful right hand is, is quite a, an advanced skill really. I'm not going to deal so much on how you might learn, get the student to learn them, except to say in the initial stages I would probably just take those chords out of, take the one quarter bar, mostly one quarter bar, um, and I would write it out on a separate piece of paper, get the student to write that, depends on how quick they'd be at that. So they learn the movement of the hand and the fingers. That would be the first thing I would do and make sure they can play it with no rhythm, no need to actually panic. They just sit on the board until they're absolutely sure they know what the next one is and I'd get them to be sure by telling me the name of the notes and the fingers. So I'm going to move my thumb to D, up to D, and I'm going to put my fourth finger on the G and let go of the A. Yeah, that way you're absolutely sure. Don't leave anything to chance because really good solid work in learning those chords like that slowly um, will really pay benefits. So then, to get these chords together, you know, we often hear them so that they're a bit ragged, don't we? Uh, for example, yeah, so they're just a bit thumpy and, and, and really lacking any, any sense of coordination there. So the first, uh, first few things I would do is, first of all, make sure the hand actually stays in or the, the fingers stay on the keys the whole time so with that F major chord you know and when I move a real economy of movement I stay close to the keys to move my fingers okay I don't come off and then go back down again I have a light dancing thumb as you look at my thumb it's it's almost on the edge of the key look and it's very light it's, if you have a heavy thumb pushing down like that it's going to stop any, any lightness to the actual chords, any sense of um, making that really musical. So my thumb is playing on the edge. What I have got though, is I've got my, my arm actually making the movement for me. So my fingers stay and my hand stays pretty much as it is, nice and firm, not solid, just firm. And then I go, and I always tell my students, it's like a wave coming down moment so we go into a D minor chord that's what Bergmuller is wanting to feel that added excitement there so for the for these chords keep the fingers in touch with the keys economy of movement a dancing thumb and let the movement come down up from your arm position as well so the arms the stool needs to be it's all connected you know the stool needs to be far enough back make sure the student can stand between the stool and the keyboard itself yeah they should be able to stand sideways that to me is a really good way of getting them to do that then I can sit towards the top uh, third of my of my of my leg and that allows the arms then to come on and the arm should be 
um, floating away from the body. Again, I tell my students, think about when they're, especially when they're starting, but even at this point to remind them, think about water wings. So they have water wings underneath their arms. Yeah? And this all stops them getting really close in. So um, that's your triads. Hope that's helpful. Now the next thing I said I was going to talk about is these lovely right hand sort of cascades of notes. I'm not going to deal with the couplet at the end, that's a, a different thing again, but um, these cascades, of course, what we often get is not the cascade, but we get the four notes. And okay, I'm exaggerating a bit there, but we often get, or we get... So, this is one set of notes. They're, they're, it's about getting those four notes to be in one gesture. It's not four individual notes, but it's one gesture, starting with finger four. And look where that gesture comes from. Guess what? It comes from my arm. Yeah? It comes from my arm and I drop them down. I'm exaggerating it at the moment, but it, I drop it down. A, a really important thing for this, absolutely crucial all the way through our piano playing, is that the alignment is going down from the elbow to the little finger. If you have a thumb alignment, which is like this, look what happens to my elbows, how uncomfortable is that? If you just try that for yourself, you can feel it pulls across your shoulders. Pianistically, we don't play like that ever. So we want the alignment coming down from the, from the elbow through to the little finger, and yes, that I know we're not using our little finger, we're using our fourth finger, but nevertheless, the alignment has got to be there. And if you find that they do sort of end up with this hand shape collapsing towards the little finger, then it's usually because that elbow is too close to the body. So you just help them to get that, I always think of a little thread, I just pull it out with that little thread coming down there, and then they can drop down. like those executive um, toys, you know the ones I mean, the, the little balls, and you have five balls in a row, and you pick up the first one, and you let go, and it goes, tick -a -tick -a yeah, tick -a -tick -a and it's exactly the same here, it's one movement, but the energy travels, it's the energy travelling down the arm, through each of the fingers that you're looking for, yeah, energy, here it goes, and actually they discover, oh, I can do this really fast, and it is absolutely secure, and each note is equal in its place. And then, of course, once you've done it up and down the piano, starting on the A, notice how I'm taking it tiny, tiny, small steps, because small steps lead to success, to be honest. And we often jump over far too many steps. So, there's the first one. Why not keep going? Do they need to read the notes for this? No, no, they don't at this moment in time. Bring the note reading in in a diff different aspect, but when you're dealing with a technical aspect, you can't overload them by saying, oh, so what's that note, and what's that note, and what's that note, okay? So they're coming down, they're getting this lovely uh, uh, cascady kind of sound, and then we start to um, join them together. So, and look how the movement now has again become that way and my fourth finger here, and my hand, all comes in, all comes in. I'm not keeping it in that position. If I get to here, my, my arm is tilting forward, and then my fourth finger. Oh, but it's so fun to play, such fun to play. Okay, so that's with the right hand, that it's one movement, not four separate ones, it's a gesture, it's having the arm alignment coming down here, and it's letting the energy go follow through for each individual finger. Da 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 My arm, look how it's moving in, that's giving me the energy. And then I speed it up and the end and the movement becomes smaller, but it all is still there. Okay, so that's your second thing. The third thing is about the coordination. And I was having a really interesting chat with a good friend of mine on Sunday about this. The coordination in this bit. Easy, isn't it? When we're playing 
this, we know how to play that. But it's not actually that easy. And um, uh, my friend had tried all the, you know, lots and lots of good methods um, because there are many ways you can tackle this. And um, here's, here's some of my thoughts, really. Obviously, you've got the left hand legato. Problems, then hopefully the notes the notes are known. Um, always try when you've got this coordination problem, doing it on on the on the body because you can feel then the movement from the left hand here. And actually, I'm hearing it as well. And then you might just try doing one finger in the right hand. So again, talking it through. So the left hand is sticking onto your leg. You can feel that all the time. Just stick with two and one and now in your right hand you're going to go bum with finger two and it's down and up and your left hand is staying there so you sort of your brain is flicking very quickly it's not doing two things at the same time it's flicking very very quickly what we want to do eventually is to automate that legato in that left hand to automate it so it becomes a skill we don't have to think about but at the moment we're thinking legato here, and I can bring my right hand in and go, boom, yeah? And then we can go onto the piano, and, and maybe again. You know, just improvise with it a little bit. here then you reduce it down you take the steps play to the end because I didn't quite get to the end just because I like it so much.